what is going on guys we are back for another episode of pokemon top fives this week we'll be covering the champ top five champions um again continuing on with our masters eight themed kind of things so um quick disclaimer for this list of course everything is 100 percent opinionated um you know this is my opinion uh this is kind of a combination of the games and the anime so i've sort of kind of lumped them all together into kind of my for my opinion of it um at the time of recording this round one of the masters eight tournament is complete uh so i've kind of seen uh, a lot of these guys battle at least once so um kind of recently and then uh you know i've seen the, the championship fights in the past right and then i also combine that with the anime i'm only really considering the anime or the the, the teams from in game but like I do take into account how they use them and everything, right? Um, so of course, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't. And of course, if you have a different list than me or a different order, make sure to leave it in the comments section down below. We'd love to see it. So without further ado, let us hop in to number five. All right, so at number five, we have Diantha. Um, she impressed me a lot in the anime. Um, we, er, we never really got to see her, um, in, in the anime before this tournament, really. I mean, she was visible. I mean, she's a, she's a movie star in Kalos, but, um, and she did battle Ash a couple times, but, like, there was no official match where you see her fighting, and so, um, for me to see her wipe the, like, to, to beat Lance the way that she did, um, you know, she brought the Aurorus, she brought um, the Gorgeist, and she brought her Gardevoir. And she beat Lance, Dynamax, Dragonite with, with the... And I mean, of course she had type advantage, but uh, you know, she... You could very clearly show that the, the writers did actually give her a very good um, interpretation because she is considered an enigma because she uses different strategies. You can see the different champions you know, applauding reflect and light screen. You can you can kind of see them tell that she has a strategy that was in mind. And so the fact that she's she's so smart, I think really put her a step above. Lance was a little bit underwhelming. And to be honest, I mean when you look at the, the champions um you know he's lost to red. He's lost to blue. Um and so you actually know that Lance has lost a couple times and he isn't really the true champion of his region. He's just acting that way because Blue is now the eighth gym leader and Red just went off and doesn't really participate in any of his duties. So um, for me, Diantha was number five. Um, her team, Gardevoir, Gudra, Gorgeist, Aurorus, Tyrantrum, and um, Halucha. Um, honestly, like, I really like her team. Um, you know, it's not the most powerful, but out of the champions, she might have one of the better competitive teams. Um, just in terms of the fact that she can set up Trick Room with two different Pokemon. She has a fairly slow team that hits pretty hard. And so, you know, when you think about it, like maybe her moveset isn't the greatest, but she actually has some really good threats. And so um, that's why she was number five for me. Uh, but let us move on to number four. All right, so at number four, we have Steven. Uh, Steven Stone is one of the most iconic characters and champions of Pokemon. Um, his team really isn't all that, but this Meta Metagross, this Mega Metagross right here, literally is like run defining if you're playing a Nuzlocke or something. Like I would say Diantha has a better team and probably you can, you can see on paper why she's a champion. With Steven, you look at his team and you go, okay, you have an Aggron, a Skarmory. Like, your team's good, don't get me wrong, but like, you're being carried by a Meta Metagross. You know what I mean? And so, uh, for me, he's number four. Um, you know, the icon of Steven it is bigger than the icon of Diantha. Um, and Mega Metagross is. You, you literally have to plan your entire team around this Pokemon when you when you get to the Elite Four. And so, um, 
then you can't say that about Deantha. You can kind of handle Deantha with what you got, but with Steven, you have to prep this Metagross, and there's no way around it. And so for me, uh, number four, just because it has a little bit more of a potent threat that you really have to remember, right? And so for me, that's why it's number four, but let's move on to number three. All right, so at number three, we have Iris, and she absolutely impressed me in the Pokemon Masters anime. I mean, oh my god. Her fight with Cynthia was crazy down to the wire. Uh, Gar Mega Guard Chomp versus Haxorus. Um, she had a really good team with her, man. She, she really did put up a good fight. Um, and to me, when you think about her in-game, she might not be the strongest champion, but Haxorus and Hydreigon hitting you on the physical and special side is such a massive threat for most teams. And we have to remember, Gen 5, there still was no fairy types. So Gen 5, dragons were still the creme de la crop of, like, you know, the best Pokemon that you could have. And so um, the fact that she has that massive, massive threat um, on the physical special side. Hydreigon is no slouch. Haxorus is an absolute monster. And so she kind of has this dual pronged attack. You know, kind of like I was saying with Steven, where like you have to prep your entire game plan around Metagross. You're prepping your entire game plan about how do I stop these two massively destructive dragons. And so for me, um, she had to be above Steven because she has two real threats to think about. Um, and honestly her fight with with Cynthia just propelled a little bit higher um what I also really like about this list is that like there's a lot of really powerful female champions in this game and so um we're kind of getting to the point where we have like a decent mix of like male and female respected champions and so um but yeah that's why she's number three on my list this week and let us move on to number two And number two, we have the overconfident, probably propelled in this series um, uh, a little bit, Champion Leon of the Gala region. Now, I knew going in that in this Masters 8 tournament that Leon was absolutely going to have the easier matchup on the way up. And then I also knew that because it's a Gen 8 series that they were of course going to have Leon be the person who's going to make it to the finals. Um, again, I'm only watching the end of round one, but you can kind of tell that's the direction that it's going. Uh, Leon basically wiped the floor with, with Alon. Um, it wasn't even close. I mean, I don't even think that Alon... He didn't bring a good team. He also didn't look like he fought very well. And then Rillaboom and Charizard came in and just did their thing. And so, um, you know, he absolutely crushed in the anime. Um, but in-game, I mean... Gigantamax and Charizard, uh, Gigantamax and Rillaboom, and then you still have to remember, this guy has an Aegislash, Dragapult, and a Haxorus just chilling there. I mean, he has five, like, legitimate, you need to prep for every single one of these Pokemon, and he just puts himself on a different stratosphere. I mean, he might have the best group of six Pokemon of all the champions, period. Um, and it's good, right? Newer games need to have that, but, um, you know, Age Slash is an absolute monster, no matter what, right? That's 150 in both defenses and 150 in both attacks, just depending on what he wants to do to you. Dragapult, same kind of deal. That's, that's a pseudo-legendary of a region, and you need to be prepared for that. It has light screen reflect. I mean, it can, it can do different things, shadow sneak, whatever you want to do. Um, infiltrator stuff. I mean, it, it is a massive, massive threat. Um, Haxorus, we talked about with Iris, right? Like, that's Iris's ace, and he just has it as, like, his third Pokemon or fourth Pokemon just chilling, right? So, um, and then, you know, when you choose Rillaboom, uh, he has a Rhyperior. Rhyperior might be the weakest link on the team, um, but I actually think that if he kept a Seismitoad, um, that he would actually have an even better team. And so, uh, for me, you know, I kind of find him a little bit annoying in game. I don't, I don't, 
I don't know. I just find him a little bit annoying. He's he's kind of everywhere, which is good, right? You want your champion to be visible and, and be doing things, helping you out in the story. But I find, you know, the overconfidence, I, I just want to beat him, right? Like, I want to beat him. I want to pummel him. And then I just want to just stomp on him every time when I go rematch, right? So, um, but yeah, so, I mean, but I have to respect that he's a really good team. Uh, we'll see how it works out in the anime. But without further ado, let us hop in to number one. All right, so at number one, I think we all knew the answer is Cynthia. It doesn't even matter if she is the has the best team. She has the best Pokemon, Garchomp. Garchomp absolutely is one of the most dominant Pokemon that we have ever seen in the anime period. This Garchomp is so scary, and she is an absolute run killer in Nuzlocke. She completely wipes the floor with everybody. Um, fun fact. Iris is the first Pokemon, is the first trainer in the anime to ever knock out one of Cynthia's Pokemon, and we've seen her battle a bunch. That's how crazy that is. The writers have made us that Cynthia is the champion of champions, and she absolutely is. There, there is no, there's nothing else you can say about it. She is pretty much the first relevant female champion in Pokemon. Period. She's one of the first you know well-respected female characters in video games and like her guard chomp just crushes everybody a melodic is super super good she has lucario super super good um the way she uses gastrodon in the in the in the anime is really really good um and then when you fight her in game uh i mean roserade basically gives her a firewater grass core because that guard chomp has fire blast and then she has a spirit tomb which has no weaknesses uh now that switches around uh she does have a togekiss that she can play out as well and togekiss is just another massive threat uh, especially now that it gives her a fairy so that gives her a fairy steel dragon core as well whenever she wants it that's just another thing that she has in her back pocket but um but yeah i mean she is just incredible um you know what else can you say i mean she is a champion of champions She's the most iconic champion in Pokemon. She has the most individually powerful Pokemon. Um, and also, I think when you consider for levels, so when you look at just the champion's levels, she also has the highest level individual Pokemon of any Pokemon. So, um, you know, it just goes to show how much Pokemon has put into her and how impactful she has been on everybody. Even if you haven't played Gen 4, you know who Cynthia is. And so... For me, that is my top five list of the champions this week. Um, I'm not 100% sure what I think next week's list is going to be just yet. Um, I'm thinking probably Elite Four. Um, I decided not, like I said, I decided not to put red and blue um, in this list. I thought they were doing other things. And so, um, but yeah, so without further ado, I'm going to wrap this up. But thanks everyone for watching. Click like, like the video, subscribe if you really liked it. And let me know your top five champions in the comment section down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one.